Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here. The study manuals for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 82. Please turn to it. Page number 82 and today is our lesson number 32. Problem number 2 is what we are about to do. We finished problem 1 yesterday. Problem number 2 says, on Monday, three students out of a class of 24 were absent. Three students out of, of, out of a class of 24 were absent. The fact that it happens to be a Monday, it does warm the cockles of one's heart. But other than that, it really doesn't, doesn't, doesn't really do anything. We really don't care if it's a Monday or Tuesday. Three out of 24, we are told, they are absent. Three out of 24, this is problem number two. Three out of 24 were absent. And the question is very straightforward. The question simply is, what does this represent in terms of percentage? Let's see how to phrase it. What percent of the, what percent of the students were absent? That's all. What does this represent as a percentage? It's very simple, very straightforward. 3 out of 24 were absent, so the number of people who were absent were 3 out of 24, and if you divide top and bottom by 3, we find that it reduces to 1 eighth. I'm going to pause here for a second. If I put the cap back on, that means I'm about to break into a sermon. It is very important that you watch the videos in their, in their proper sequence, there are many concepts that we learn and once we cover some, some, some concepts, some subject, I take it for granted that you know it. On day number 8 and 9, we spend a great deal of time learning our tenths, our fifths, our quarters and the eighths, our thirds and the sixth. And at that point, I emphasize and I told you, make sure you know your, your, your decimals, your fractions, your equivalent percentages for these three categories, the tenths and the fifths, the quarters and the eighths, the thirds and the sixth, because they come in very handy and they save you a great deal of time. Right here is a, here is the example. The question simply is, what is one eighth in terms of percentage? And if you knew it by heart, we would, we would have been done in split second. We know, we know that one quarter, we know one quarter is equal to 25 percent. That we do know. We also know that one eighth is simply half of one quarter. Half of one quarter is one eighth. The question is, what is half of 25? Half of 25, well, half of 24 is 12. So half of 25 is going to be 12 and a half. 12 and a half percent, 12 and a half percent. The answer is, this is equal to 12 and a half percent or 12.5 percent, however we want to put it. That's, that's all they're looking for. And the question such as this should take no more than three, four, five seconds at the most. They're just asking you what is one eighth. One eighth is 12 and a half percent, we learned it already. Let's go to the next one, shall we? The last one on the page, number three. Give me one, one second here. Of course, one does get exhausted after one has figured out what one eighth is. It's only natural. Number three, the 18 students who received an A in math represents 30% of the class. All right, 18, 18 represents 30% of the class, 30% of the class, and the class simply is, uh, and the question simply is rather, the question simply is, What's the size of the class? What is the size of the class? Well, that's pretty straightforward. There is not much really to do anything. Um, there is not much here to do actually. They are telling us that 18 represents. How do we say represents? How do we how do we how do we translate this word in the language of mathematics? What represents means equals. 18 equals 30 percent. They tell us. 38, this, I'm going to read this part, this mathematical sentence. An equation is a sentence. The equivalent concept in mathematics of a sentence is an equation. An equation is a sentence in the language of mathematics. 
So we're going to translate this sentence from math to English. It says 18 represents 30 percent. Well, if 18 represents 30 percent, then if you were to divide both sides by 3, then what we find is that 30 divided by 3 is 10, and what we find is that if 18 represents 30 percent, then 6 must represent 10 percent. 6 represents 10 percent. Well, if 6 represents 10 percent, then 100 percent, which is, which is the total class, 100 percent must be 10 times the amount. The answer is there are 60 kids in the, there are 60 kids in the school, in, in the class. There are 60 students in the class and 30 percent of 60 would be 18, which makes perfect sense because 10 percent of 60 we know, because we know 10 percent of 60 is 6 and therefore 30 percent would be 6 times 3, which is 18, which is what it says here, 18 represents 30 percent. So this was one way of doing it. The classical way would have been to set it up as an equation and if you like we can do that too. I need the room. Or can we do it? I'm going to do it here. I'm going to, we're going to erase this thing and we're going to do it now in a classical way with an equation. Only if you insist. Only if you're hell bent. Do you understand? So the question here is 30% 30% of what is 18? That's what they're asking here. Or 18 is 30% of what? Same thing. 30 percent, percent means over a hundred, percent means over a hundred, of means times, what is our unknown quantity which we usually represent with the letter x, is means equal 18, there you go, there is your equation, I'm going to raise this arrow so it doesn't get in the way, what is the unknown part, is means equal, there you go, there is your equation, multiply both sides by 100, but we're making too much fuss about nothing at all. That 100 goes out. Divide both sides by 30. So this 30 goes out and x equals, in other words, we were trying to separate the x by itself, which we just did. x equals 18 times 100 over 30. Don't waste your time multiplying 18 times 100. It's not necessary. We multiply and divide and do things at the, at the very end when it is absolutely necessary. We try to reduce as much as we can. And of course, we can reduce. Divide top and bottom by 10. 0 cancels out. Divide top and bottom by 6, and 3 cancels out, and we get a 6 here. 6 times 10 is 60, which is exactly what we found before. But all of this thing was very academic, very nerdy, very geeky, very orthodox, very traditional, very classical. It wasn't necessary. Just ask yourself, if 18 represents 30%, if 18 is 30%, then a third, a third of that must be 10%. And third of 18 is 6 so 6 is 10%, but well, if 6 is 10%, if 10% if of something is 6, then 100% must be 10 times the amount, which is 60, which is what we found here, 6 times 10. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.